Hello, good day everyone. This is Randy and I'm going to do a quick review, I guess kind of check in with Garuda Linux. I haven't checked out Garuda Linux in quite some time and it is a very eye candy looking distro. I'll say that first thing. I've already updated it and installed it, so I'm just going to log in. Now the cool thing about Garuda is that it uses the BTRFS uh, file system as its default. And it also uses ZSTD compression. So from their website, um, the Garuda Linux website, BTRFS is a modern copy-on-write file system for Linux aimed at implementing advanced features while also focusing on fault tolerance, repair, and an easy administration. We use automatic snapshots out of the box. While being a rolling release distro, our goal is to ensure that your system will not be left in an unbootable state after a problematic update. The BTRFS file system integrated with Snapper will back up the system configuration before each update. You can access recent snapshots directly from Grub. So that's automatically making Arch Linux a lot easier, <laughs> um, in my opinion, uh, if, you're, if you haven't used Arch Linux before. This is an Arch-based distro, and it is beautiful. I mean, look at these icons and the layout. It's just amazing. Now, something really nice about Garuda is that it has Garuda Assistant. And it says they provide it on their website a variety of GUI tools that make maintaining and configuring, configuring your system to your liking much easier and less time consuming. And ranging from Garuda Assistant, an application for configuring or performing common actions to Snapper Tools, a homegrown Snapper management GUI. That's what they have. So uh, no, sh no step should be too far for the best experience. So let's go open up Garuda Assistant. We got system update, which is the first thing I ran, and it already did an update and made it super easy to update every possible thing on the system in one pass. It was very quick. I didn't do any of the other things like refresh key rings or refresh mirror. I did clear package cache just for the heck of it. That was also very quick. And if you head here over to BTRFS Snapper, it tells you and directs you to the BTRFS Assistant. So. We'll skip that for now. I'm not here doing backups, but very cool to have snapshots capable in the operating system right off the get-go, right, right off, right out, right out of the gate. I guess it's it's so cool. Um, all these advanced options. I'm not going to mess with this right now since we're recording a video. So that's really it for a Garuda assistant. I'm going to go ahead and close that, and it takes you back to the Garuda welcome screen. So everything kind of gets out of the way. It's really nice. There's Garuda Gamer. There's Garuda Settings Manager, there's Garuda Network Assistant, Boot Options, BTRFS Assistant, Partition Manager. It's got everything here. And they even have some links to their chat, uh, ways to chat with the community and get support, I take it. That's what I would assume it's for. It's even got a link to Bitwarden, which is interesting. I have my own Bitwarden account that I use for my personal passwords. I love it. Uh, let's see, what else can we check out? Let's close the Garuda Welcome screen. Actually, you know what? Let's check out Garuda Gamer real quick. It's got a bunch of emulators. And, wow, this is so cool. Everything's just like here, like they're almost like their own little app store. This is really useful. And under games, we have a large list of games that we can choose from to install. You know, there's quite a few there. Um, I'd probably just give out, a, you know, give a couple a try and see how it goes. I might do that later. And, of course, yeah, there's the emulators. All right, this is really cool. This is something really useful because... When it comes to Linux, I'm not very familiar with gaming, and I think it's a great platform for gaming. So let's go ahead and close Garuda Gamer, and it's going to take us back to Garuda Welcome. And this now I'm going to close, and I'm going to actually poke around, actually poke around the operating system a little bit. So we got, here we got Octopi. These icons look so cool. I mean, whoever the design team is, they got some chops. This is impressive. Snapper Tools, System Monitor, Let's see what kind of system resources we're using up. Out of the 12 gigs of RAM, I got 1.8 gigs. That's not bad. I mean, you figure I did some updates. Uh, it's running in a virtual machine. It's probably running a little more inefficient than it would on bare bones, but not bad. And uh, let's close. This is really, this is, oh, the theming just looks great. Like the text is easy to read. It pops. It looks great. Let's close that. Let's go to the Gru to Welcome Let's click that again. See if there's anything I missed. No. Let's click up here. Like you got this this application launcher up here. 
So it's, it's a little bit different than I'm used to with KDE out of the box, but the theming again looks so polished and, and just well done. It's like I might as well just keep it, right? Um, for applications, for all of them, we got, uh, well, I'm not going to read through every one of them, but for development, you got Kate, the text editor. You got all these right here. I'm not going to read them all. Ocular for graphics. Uh, I would like to see GIMP, so I probably go ahead and install that. Uh, for internet, you got Fire Dragon web browser. I'm guessing that's a port, uh, fork of Firefox, maybe. I, have, I don't think I've ever used Fire Dragon. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and for also for the internet, we got SSH server browsers. We got a VNC server browser which is cool. Uh, you got multimedia. We got a VLC media player. Nice. I like that that's out of the box. Let's click it. Everything launches really fast too. Very snappy. I keep going down to the bottom left side. Sorry, I've, that's the second time I've done that. And I've clicked the grew to welcome button instead of actually going up here to, to click the menu to get the KDE menu. But I do like how this is really small. This bar up here is like really narrow and kind of like how it cuts away on the edges. It looks really polished. Oh, that's that's so sweet. Um, so yeah, we opened up VLC Media Player. Let's go to Office. I don't see any Office Suite. Not a problem. I don't really use an Office Suite. I do most of my stuff online in the browser, so that's pretty cool. There's a GUI for installing and selecting, manipulating Cavantum. Cavantum Manager. I don't even know what Cavantum is. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Um, system. We got BTRFS Assistant. Remember, that's where it directed us to do the backups. Let's let's go there. I said I wasn't going to do any backups, but let's just see what we got. Let's see if it's, if it's enabled. To, uh, you can enable quotas. You can start backup right now. That is so cool. Um, you could scrub and balance. Yeah, I'm not going to mess with that during a video. Not at all. Not even a bit. <laughs> But this is so, so cool. Let's see how easy it is to install an app. Let's go to Octopi. And I said I was going to search for, let's look for Firefox. There's Firefox. We're going to check the box. Install. Click OK. Click the green check mark. Click Yes. Type our password. Let's see how fast it goes. Boy, oh boy, that was fast. So now if we go up here to the programs, let's go up to Internet, and there is Firefox. Very cool. Let's see if we can find Brave Browser in their main repository. Yes. Brave Binary. That's awesome. So go to Install. Let's go to Yes. Type our password. Let's see how fast this one goes. Wait, it says zero installed. Did I not check it properly? Oh, there it goes. Now it's doing something at least. Uh, zero installed. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I don't think it happened. Let's try that one more time. I don't know what happened that time, but let's see. Let's see if it uh, errors out again. And if it doesn't work, there's, you know, you can go to Brave's website and they usually give you the, the commands you can type in the terminal to add it. So let's try that. Let's, let's, let's do a little assignment here. Let's go to the browser that I did install successfully, and that was Firefox. And let's go to install Brave browser. Oops. Okay, we go to Brave browser download. Now if we scroll down or get brave for Linux. Fedora, let's see, Flatpak, beta channel. Unofficial packages, here we go. The Arch package are available as brave, but yeah, that was one we saw, brave bind or binary and uh, brave beta binary and nightly. Um, I saw at least the beta and the regular one. So to install it, you'll need to use an R helper such as yay. Let's try it from the command like this. We'll open up console. We're going to right click. Type our password. Let's see if it works this way. I 
I mean, this is still easier than downloading a setup file on Windows and clicking next, 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 right? Just hitting Y after typing my password. Let's see if it does it. So there's something wrong with the mirror, I guess. This chaotix.cx. That's what it seems like the issue is. We get a 404. So that's something we could fix. We could probably download a package and run it that way, but I'm not going to do that today. But just wanted to check it out and see how easy it was to install a browser. But right now, if that repository is down or whatever, that could be an issue. So let's try this. Let's do another package. Let's go back to Octopi. Let's close our console. Let's look up... Um, Sauerbrot. Sauerbrot, and they do have that. It's a really cool game that I played on Linux when I first started using Linux. And let's see how fast this installs. It's a pretty good size. It's one gigabyte. Let's do this. Live. <laughs> I have a feeling this will install because it's probably not coming from the same source as Brave. So right now, 4% done. It's kind <laughs> of... It's actually going pretty pretty good. You know what I'm going to do for, for, my, for my viewers? I'm going to pause this and then resume it once it finishes because I have a feeling it'll take a couple minutes. It's not my connection, but... Um, my connection, I'm, I'm on fiber. Uh, but it's definitely just how fast it's letting me download it. All right, I skipped ahead. I finished it. Uh, it installed. Not a big deal. So, yeah, going to skip ahead and just finish up this video because I don't want to waste your time with that install. But it did take, a, I don't know, probably a couple minutes, and it wasn't too bad. So that's really, I mean, other than the icons up here at the top, that's really all there is to look at for, for me to do a quick review on this. I do like how the sound and like the logout button up here is like just integrated. You got right here, you got lock screen, logout, new session. You got this little drop down that has some notifications, display configuration. Everything's just tucked away nicely. And these icons themselves are very polished. You got your network connected to wired internet, which is true. I'm cabled in. And uh, Garuda, Dragonized, Bird of Prey. That's the most recent device. That's the Bluetooth, I guess. And the disks. Um, it's all listed here. Reformat or partition. This is so cool. The sound meter is really polished. It's right here. Cool. Got clipboard manager. And there's the up. Yep, that's exactly what I copied. Let's click this. That's the plasma integration with Firefox. Okay, cool. So all in all, I give this a very good review. <laughs> Uh, not not a very in-depth one, that is, but I, I think it's a great distribution and worth checking out, especially for someone that wants to try Arch for the first time and have it be easy. Thanks for watching.